Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And Brian, thank you for that, for that just warm, warm welcome. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to see you and to be here. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's exciting. It's exciting to be able to be here in person. Uh, so I just thank the IAMHL and uh, IADL for the invitation to be here, uh, for convening us, uh, because what an, uh, what an opportunity um, it is to be able to have uh, these moments together uh, over two days. Uh, and you know, I, I noted in the introduction, it was, uh, you know, Brian, you noted that it was, um, that our group here is, is a bit smaller uh, and the opportunity that comes from that. Uh, and and I, I really b believe that. You know, one of the things that, um, that I think is so important and is you know, presence and listening. Uh, and I think with a group this size, it does afford and create the opportunity for, uh, for real sharing. Um, and for being present and for listening to each other. Uh, and we know in the moment that we're in right now um, how important that is uh, as we've moved through the last three years, uh, you know, experiencing COVID and the ripple effects from that. Um, certainly speaking from a U.S. perspective, we have seen and still are seeing and experiencing ripple effects of that that, that shapes our behavioral health work. Um, I imagine from an international perspective that is the case as well. Um, but I think over the next two days, there's the opportunity really to share how, how we've moved through uh, the, the last three years uh, in, our, uh, you know, in ways that ultimately are about promoting uh, wellness and recovery um, and helping individuals to leave, live full, whole, meaningful lives. Um, and so welcome, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone has a uh, successful conference. I hope you're able to to um, glean from the conference those questions that, that brought you through the door to begin with, uh, and that it is a rich experience. Um, I do want to share a little bit about, you know, from a U.S. perspective, some of what we've been experiencing and, and seeing. Uh, and certainly over the, the course of the two days, there are many SAMHSA uh, representatives here uh, to include you know, Dr. Anita Everett, who is our director of the Center for Mental Health Services. Um, extraordinaire, I might say. Um, but you know, we'll, I'll share a bit about SAMHSA and some of what um, we've been working on and seeing and experiencing over the year, uh, or the last three years. Um, and over the course of the two days, I think it's an opportunity. I know the SAMHSA team is interested also in hearing you know, the experiences that you all are having. Uh, and uh, innovations that you're thinking about and moving forward, uh, ultimately with the goal of treating people with dignity and respect uh, and creating inclusion. That's the other thing. I love the theme of the conference. Love the theme of the conference. Uh, inclusion, we know that is so important, and especially now. Uh, resilience, we know resilience is always important, but again, especially now in growth. Ultimately, it's about growth and continuing to move forward. Um, so I applaud IAMHL and IIDL uh, for the theme of the conference. But just a little bit in terms of what, you know, we're focused on and, and, and looking at and working on here. I mean, we know, again, unprecedented uh, time. Uh, we hear that a lot. Um, some of our recent data uh, shows about two in five, uh, about two in five uh, adults report symptoms of anxiety or depression. Uh, also, we've seen our drug overdose rates continue to, to rise. About 104,000 Americans died of overdose over the last 12 months. Um, those numbers are absolutely heartbreaking. They're heartbreaking. I think we all know individuals that have been impacted by, uh, by the loss of an individual through, uh, you know, through the overdoses. Um, and our, our suicide rates are continuing to increase as well in, in, in some areas and among some groups. Um, this past year, President Biden uh, announced a unity agenda. Uh, and a mental health uh, agenda. Um, there are three main areas that that agenda outlined, including strengthening system capacity. Ultimately, that's what it about. it's about, you know, creating strong, accessible, culturally responsive systems of care. Um, connecting Americans to that care. It's not enough to have the care, but we have to figure out ways to, to be uh, sensitive and to outreach and connect people to care. Um, and then creating a continuum of support that aims to transform, transform 
our, our health and social services. Ultimately, it's about system transformation um, and how do we create systems of care, again, that are inclusive, that are culturally responsive, that are recovery oriented, that meet people where they're at, that, and that help individuals to um, achieve and move, uh, you know, uh, achieve lives of their choosing uh, and experience long-term recovery. Um, just a few areas that we're focused on, 988, uh, that has been a priority uh, for, uh, for SAMHSA. It's been certainly a priority uh, in, in terms of across the nation, and ultimately the goal there is to increase access to services. So now a person can call 988 or text or chat and speak to a trained counselor who will uh, speak with them and ultimately connect them uh, to services and supports as necessary. Um, and again, that's through call, text, or chat. Uh, another, another thing we're really working on is helping to ensure people have access to care. Um, and through our CCBHCs, we now have 430 CCBHCs, certified community behavioral health clinics that are community-based, available 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Uh, ultimately, that's about ensuring rapid access um, and, again, connecting people to a broad range of services and supports. And so those are just two examples. Um, there are other things that we're focused on, certainly children and youth. We know that that is an area where we're seeing struggles here as well uh, and, and working to uh, implement early intervention programs and programs to ultimately connect young people to needed services and supports. Um, but again, those are just three examples. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here, pleasure for me to be here. Um, certainly looking forward to hearing about some of the innovations and some of the work that, that you all uh, are uh, implementing and are moving forward. I understand through the uh, IAMHL and, and IIDL, there are 10 countries represented, uh, possibly even more. And so that is such a rich, rich opportunity uh, to be able to share on innovations. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you again for the invitation to be here. Uh, and I wish everyone a successful and fulfilling two days. Thank you. Thank you.